Hello F11 members and welcome to the post-production video tutorials for issue 67, August 2017. You'll be aware over the last couple of months we've been running a lowdown series on the workflow. Uh, first feature looked at the capture, second feature looked at the transfer from memory card to computer, and now here in the third series I'd like to move over to the video format and talk about the import. So, where have we got to? We've taken the images off the memory card, I backed them up in the field to, or uh, when I, after, as soon as possible after the shoot, to my laptop, and I've now copied them into a folder on my computer system here in our digital darkroom. And now if I go into this folder here, called Raw Images, you'll see I've structured this folder by date, by year. So if I click on 2017, go into that, and I'm looking at a shoot I did just a few days ago uh, nearby here in Dorset at Sturminster Newton. Uh, and if I click on July 2017, you'll see if I just clean up that selection there, that uh, folder structure there, here are all the folders arranged on the date the images were shot. I find this a really useful way to work. It gives a structure to the system. You really do need a system rather than just dumping raw folders into any old place on your computer system. Because occasionally I need to come back and access those precious raw images, maybe to reprocess them. Uh, and uh, I'll need to be able to find them. And if I've got this folder system based on date, it helps uh, a lot. Now, if I go into that folder, there are all the images uh, that I shot as uh, raw, raw files. Okay, so I can now just minimize this folder and go into Lightroom and consider what we're going to do next. Now, I base my system around working in different Lightroom catalogs. You'll see up here on the top bar here it says Edit. That's a Lightroom catalog that I have created which I use solely for the editing of my images. I have another one called the High res Library which I use for managing the entire collection of processed images. But this is the one I use for the editing. That's the way I choose to work. You may choose to do things differently. There are many ways to skin a cat. All I can say is it works for me. And if you want to create, uh, take a leaf out of my book and create a, cat, a similar named catalog, all you do is up here in the top toolbar, it says Lightroom File, and then the drop down menu, you'll see there's a new catalog tab there. And you click on that and create a catalog with whatever name you like. Let's just consider what Lightroom does. So all the images are here in that folder, the raw images folder. Lightroom merely enables us to look at those images. It's not actually going to do anything to those raw images. Yes, when it comes to processing the images, we're going to apply adjustments, but those adjustments do not touch the original raw image. They will only affect images that we then choose to export or i.e. copy from these raw images with the Lightroom adjustments applied. But that's for the future. At the moment we're just looking at the import. So first thing I want to do now is come along and uh, come down and click I need to import those images from that shoot on the 17th of July. So I click on import and up here, before I go any further, I just want to make sure here that we have this metadata tab. Can you see there's a tab here that says Apply During Import? Make sure the drop down is activated. Come down to the Metadata tab, and what I want to do is create a new preset metadata. Okay, I'm just showing you how you would do this for yourself if you've not done it before because it's really, really important that at this stage your ownership of that image is established. 
So let's create just a false one here. John Brown, copyright status, copyrighted. We can put in uh, a website if there were one. This is purely fictitious, but I'm doing it just to show you how it's done if you haven't yet created your own metadata preset. And then I put in the name there. I could put in all sorts of uh, other information, address and the like, email, website. But uh, really, this is the important stuff. How much you put in there is up to you, but I've just put that in there. And that's the important stuff. Click on, I need to give this a name. So when I click on done here, it will ask me, do I want to give it a name? So I'm going to save as John Brown, create. And now you'll see up here in the list of metadata drop-down options, I have DMP1, that's me. I've got Wendy, and I've now got John Brown. I don't want to apply John Brown's details to all my images, so I'm going to select the preset I've already made called DMP1. And now that ownership information will be embedded in every image as it's imported. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is import the images. So I'm going to come down here and I select the destination. So first of all, it's on the media hard drive. It's in the folder called raw images. Click on the drop down. It's in the subfolder called 2017. It's in the sub subfolder called July 2017. And there's the date. There's the sub sub subfolders. And now I just click on 17th of July 2017. And the pictures in that folder are shown. At this stage, they have not yet been imported. You can see up the top here, I've clicked on new photos. If I had already imported this, these images, Lightroom would recognize that fact and they would be masked down. So make sure you've got that new photos clicked there because you don't want to start importing the same picture twice. Okay, now I click on import and it's going to bring those images in. And you'll see up here and the taskbar top left that's now importing the images. Now one of the great drawbacks of shooting with these high resolution images that we do, sorry high resolution cameras that we do is there's a lot of data, there's a lot of information to handle so it's gonna take Lightroom a few minutes to import these images. A lot, a lot of work going on at this moment and as you can see it's chuntering along quite nicely but it was a particularly beautiful morning there and there's a fair few images to bring in so I'm just going to pause you while Lightroom's working on that. Okay so it's still working away almost finished you'll see the images at this stage look quite soft and unappealing that's because they've not yet been Lightroom hasn't yet built the preview thumbnails for them. So they're looking fuzzy and unsharp even at this thumbnail size. And if you can see up the top of each thumbnail there's these three little dots there and that's indicating to me that Lightroom's still reading those images. There you see they've just popped up off so Lightroom has now seen that image. If I scroll down it's still working on seeing these pictures. It'll take a while for it to go through the whole lot and build the image previews. Uh, even with the fastest computer in the world, these high resolution images do make, uh, do cause slight delays. And if I click on one of these images now and go up, you, you can see it's not yet built that preview. It's loading it now. It takes a, a few seconds. Just be patient. This is probably the time to just let your computer do its stuff. Let it read all the images. There you can see it's popped into clarity. And um, put the kettle on and uh, come back. 
As you can see, I've got in the image my metadata information, my, my uh, copyright, my ownership of the images is embedded in, in them all. The next thing we want to do, and again, this is really important, and this is the natural time to do it, before you even start looking at your images and deciding which you want to work on, is to apply captions. But before I'm going to do that, I'm just going to go up here to the window at the top, sorry, this, the, the menu at the top, click on View, come down to Sort, and make sure it's arranging the images based on their file name. That way they'll be consecutively ordered in the, uh, in the order that they were actually exposed. Okay, now let's now move on to the other things that we do before we even need before we start the editing, we want to apply the captions to all the relevant images. So from that shoot, it's going to be the same caption for every image. So I just select the first image in the, of the shoot and put my caption in. By the way, because I've shot it on the 5D Mark IV, I have GPS information embedded. So it was just down the road, I know where it was, but if I needed reminding, or if I needed to just double check anything, I can click on the GPS tab there. It's just going to read that and it's going to show me where the image was shot. I can then, on the map there, I can then zoom in subsequently to get... It's a little bit slow this morning, but there you can see Sturminster Newton Mill and on the River Stour. There you go. Come back into library mode. Now, that's really useful. I, I've, I really um, kind of miss having that GPS information embedded in, in pictures now. When I'm shooting with the 5DS, it doesn't have it. Okay, so let's put caption in, information in here. So I'm just going to put uh, a branch of the River Stour. At dawn, Sturminster Newton, Dorset, England. Okay, that's um, that's all good. So what I can do now is then select all the images in the shoot. Just double check come right down to the bottom just to check they're all are going to have the same caption. They are. So if I select them all, all of, and now come down bottom right, you'll hear, see there's a tab here called Sync Metadata. Click on that. It's now going to apply that caption to every image in the sequence. Click on Synchronize now, and the, tool, the progress bar top left is showing me what's happening and as, as it's pasting that caption into every image of the shoot. Now obviously I'm only going to work on a few images, but I don't need to worry about the caption anymore. That, that's done, as is my metadata information. So again, it's applying that to quite a few images, so we just need to be patient here. Okay, so that's done, and in the in the relevant image, now we have in the, every image the caption information. What, what next do I need to do before I start editing, choosing which pictures to work on uh, and editing them is uh, just alter how I can look at the images. Uh, just by hitting the plus or the minus key on your thumb, uh, sorry, on your keyboard, you can alter your thumbnail size. So I can go for a really thumb, small thumbnail size to enable me to see a lot of the images all at once and identify when really the light started to come good around about here. So say I started to think, okay, this is, I want to take a closer look at that. I can now alter my thumbnail size using the plus uh, key on my keyboard and go up to really quite large thumbnail sizes there, which is really useful. I find myself going up and down on the thumbnail sizes 
as I want, as I work through the process, the images. A really, really useful feature that. Another thing down here to be aware of is uh, if you use a second monitor, you can switch that on and off using just clicking on this button here. I do use a second monitor. I find it really useful, uh, but uh, that's how you can activate or deactivate it. So we're pretty much ready now to start logically working through the shoot and choosing the best images. That is the subject for next month's workflow special. Uh, and this month was hopefully useful in just talking about that business of importing. With this series, I'm trying to be really methodical and pedantic about the way we work. That is the key to having a system for your workflow that is that helps you get organized. Everyone works differently, but this system works well for me. Okay, that's enough for this month. We'll see you next month. Thank you.